welcome back inside of the Plastic Planet. I am your host, Nick Nick, hanging out with you guys tonight. And I just wanted to say, and this sounds so cliche, but I haven't gotten a video up in over a week. And well, I hate saying these kind of things because like I said, it does sound really cliche, but yeah, life has kind of gotten in the way. If you'll notice, I'm up in my living room and you'll see this wonderful gray ocean of brand new carpeting that my wife bought. She bought it with her own money, guys, because she's got a really good job. Actually, she makes a lot more money than I do. Uh, but anyway, so she got this awesome carpet. And uh, I'm not, you notice, notice I usually have a beer in my videos. I'm not even going to drink a beer near this carpet because I'm not going to be the asshole that first <laughs> spills on the wife's carpeting. And uh, so, yeah, so we got this awesome carpet. I just love the smell of brand new carpet. It's like, it's like, it's like, it's like almost an aphrodisiac, you know? I mean, it's like, it's like right up there with like sniffing rubber cement for me, brand new carpet. So I am so stoked that we have this in the house. But yes, this has kind of kept me a little bit busy. You had me moving furniture the other night. Yep, I sure did. Yeah. So, uh, so anyway, but yeah, but I got a great video for you guys tonight. We're going to head downstairs just right below us. Exactly right below us is the archive room of the Plastic Planet. We're going to head downstairs because I have some very, very unique eBay purchases that I'm going to show off. In fact, this is the most eclectic like haul from eBay I've ever gotten. And yes, you hear our puppy uh, crying <laughs> in the background. She really wants to get out on this brand new carpet and take a giant shit. But we're not letting her. Not yet. Not yet. We want to at least have it for 48 hours before any animal urinates or defecates on this sea of amazingly awesome smelling soft gray carpet. We haven't even gotten the furniture back in. That's that's how new this is. So, uh, yeah. So, anyway, like I said, without further ado, we're going to head downstairs right below us into the archive room. And I'm going to show you guys this unique, eclectic uh, haul that I have gotten from eBay in the last couple weeks. And uh, then maybe we'll get that puppy to shut up, too. All right, guys, stick around. This is going to be great. <laughs> Hey, 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 welcome back inside of the Plastic Planet. Like I said before that uh, interim there, I am your host, Nick Nick. And uh, tonight, guys, tonight, um, I truly am giving definition to the, whenever I, I, I kind of say that, you know, on this channel where your childhood is my hood, well, I definitely am kind of giving that some um, some credence, some street cred, as they might call it, tonight with this really eclectic eBay uh, haul that I'm about to show you guys uh, tonight. It's really, really freaking awesome. I'm really excited to show off these items on the channel. Uh, one of them is a really long time in coming and being added to my collection, um, my action figure collection. And I guess technically they, these could be considered action figures. Um, they are in this wonderfully uh, packed box right here. Sorry, I didn't mean to shake the camera. This box, this mystery box, they are packed up in there right now. Um, so do stick around for that at the end of the video or close to the end of the video. Um, I will be sh revealing the contents of this mystery eBay box to you guys. And it's going to be really, really cool. At least I think it's really cool. You may not think so, but but stick around nonetheless. I just Yeah, it's going to be great. But in the meantime, I do have a few other things to show off to you guys uh, tonight. First of all, I did a minor run to one of my very favorite stores here in town. Um, E-Planet Toys in Inglewood, Colorado, or Centennial, Colorado. Um, it's down in the uh, Denver Tech Center, um, for those of you who are maybe more local and, and, and know uh, and know where I'm talking about. I do have a subscriber in Colorado Springs, Aaron, I think, so he might know where I'm talking about. But nevertheless, uh, I, I, I hit up my E-Planet Toys uh, this week. They're great guys over there. I bought a Hot Toys figure, but I'm not going to show off that yet. Um, that'll be in the coming video. But I did get a new Hot Toys figure, so I'm very excited to show off that. But I also got, and these are really cool too, a couple G1 Vintage Transformers. I got these for both of these for under 13 bucks, both. Uh, so really excited. I got a G1 Huffer. Look at that. That's gorgeous. I never had Huffer as a kid. I always had Pipes. Now, Pipes was the uh, basically the repaint of Huffer, even though he's not totally technically a repaint because 
Uh, he transforms a little bit differently than Huffer does. But uh, so I was really excited to add Huffer to my G1 Transformer collection. I'm going to be getting all, all my G1 Transformers here in the next coming, oh, I don't know, week or so. I do have a full room tour of the archive room coming, guys. And I'm looking at you, Robert, just a fan. Uh, I know you've been asking, and I know I've kind of teased it, and I teased it a couple months ago. I really stretched this out. But I wanted to add some of these elements down here into the archive room and get a few more odds and ends straightened up because, well, you know, if, if for me, a room tour is a huge, huge uh, boost for uh, subscribers. It's kind of like when PBS does their once a quarter begathon, you know what I'm saying? Where they get on and they show something really, really kick ass and, and they keep interrupting it, you know, like every 10 minutes to, to ask you to send money. That's sort of like what a room tour is for my channel. So I really want to make it a really good, not that I'm going to interrupt it and ask you to send money, but I'm just saying it's like, that's how I get a lot of eyes on my channel and hopefully a lot of subscribers uh, through room tour videos. So I'm kind of like trying to get everything all, all the, all the, all, all my, my, my bows tied and uh, my eyes dotted and my T's crossed before I give these, uh, those, those two room tour videos that I have coming. Uh, so anyway, yes, do stay tuned for that. They are coming. I do promise. But anyway, back to what I was talking about. So anyway, so I am going to get out most of my G1 transformers, uh, and uh, I'm definitely be including Huffer in that as well as, look, I got a Terracon. I can't remember what this guy's name is. I should have looked it up before I got on. Uh, I'm kind of embarrassed I don't know this guy's name. Uh, but anyway, I got a Terracon. And he, of course, was uh, from, uh, I think, you know, Wave 4 of the Transformers from the 1987 line, I want to say. Or maybe it was the 19... Nah, it would have been the 1987 line. He came out uh, the same year as the Headmasters and Targetmasters. Uh, so uh, came, I have Hungar already in my collection. I've had Hungar since I was a kid. So I'm adding this Terracon. He's really, really cool. Uh, this like, you know, kind of like monkey shark thing. Really, really awesome. So anyway, so I picked up those two. That's really cool. And then I also added another transformer, which is considerably more expensive, but very, very cool. And that is, of course, the Fan Toys. The Fan Toys Hoodlum, a.k.a. Hot Rod. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Fan Toys. I am just making myself more familiar with Fan Toys as of recently. Uh, uh, my good buddy and uh, off sometimes uh, collaborator on this channel, Uncle Pat has been buying a shit ton of Masterpiece Transformers, including a number of fan toys figures. He kind of got me going on these myself a little bit. So I got this Hoodlum one, and it is absolutely fantastic. I spent $75 on him on eBay. Um, he is gently used. I think he was displayed somewhere. Um, really awesome. You know what? These fan toys, third-party Transformers, in my opinion, they're almost like the Transformer equivalent of Hot Toys. Yeah, they don't cost nearly as, well, in some cases they do cost as much as the Hot Toys. I, I won't go that far, but but they're not nearly as expensive generally as a Hot Toys figure, but the quality and just the sculpts are amazing on these things. So I'm going to get this guy out of the box for you guys and show him off to you guys right now. I'm even going to do a little bit of a compare and contrast because I do have a knockoff Takara Hasbro um, Hot Rod Masterpiece to compare with this one. And I think you're going to note, you're going to, you're going to note that the, uh, the difference is a little stunning. So let's get to that right now. Alrighty, so check it out. Here is my Fan Toys um, 17 Hoodlum, aka really Hot Rod. Um, <laughs> I love this character so much. I know a Hot Rod slash Rodimus Prime is somewhat of a polarizing uh, character amongst G1 Transformers fan. You kind of were either Team Rodimus or not Team Rodimus. Um, it doesn't mean that I'm anti Optimus Prime by any sense, but I was always always kind of related more to Hot Rod slash Rodimus Prime just because of uh, uh, his insecurities and youth. And he really, in my opinion, was like one of the only Transformers that actually had somewhat of a somewhat of a hero's journey. I talk a lot about that on this channel. Um, sort of a I don't know. I, comparing it to like a Joseph Campbell's hero's journey might be a little bit of a stretch. But he did sort of have sort of a Luke Skywalker esque hero's journey um, as he ascended to the leadership of the Autobots from a brash, arrogant youth um, in Transformers the movie. So I always kind of just kind of related to his character a lot. But yeah, anyway, this figure is absolutely fantastic. As I kind of indicated before uh, we went on, there is actually, this is a fan toys piece. And now the Autobot symbol did not come with him. Actually, like I said, this is another owner. I uh, had a previous owner, and so uh, he put this Autobot symbol on. He didn't do a very good job. It's kind of kind of haphazardly slapped on there. I probably will be buying another Autobot repo label of some kind, a uh, repro label of some kind to put on there to replace this because I really don't like the way he did that. But nevertheless, so he wouldn't come with the Autobot uh, uh, symbol because it's not a, an official uh, Hasbro Takara product. Nevertheless, there's a ton of die cast in this. This figure has a lot of great weight, and just look at that face sculpt. I just, I absolutely dig it a lot. It actually kind of reminds me a lot of the Gentle Giant uh, bust, or I'm sorry, not Gentle Giant, 
a hard hero bus that I have um, in, in, in an action figure form. Now this figure will transform into the car, which I'm not going to do because this is just a showcase, not really a review. And I hate transforming these uh, large masterpiece transformers. I, I could flip that uh, that Huffer, that G1 Huffer into, into truck mode for you in about two seconds. But this guy, I'm just not going to take the time, nor do I want to really risk damaging my investment, which is what exactly this is, my investment. So anyway, but yeah, this is a fantastic piece. I absolutely love the way uh, everything looks on him. Uh, he, he's got a nice, nice feel, nice lines of symmetry, uh, great face sculpt. He actually comes with two face sculpts, and I've never actually put the other one on, but I think I will tonight. It's more of a stern, uh, Rodimus Prime-esque kind of face sculpt. Um, I don't know why you'd really need that, because he doesn't actually scale up uh, to other Masterpiece Transformers as Rodimus Prime. He's actually, he's, he, he scales up fine as Hot Rod, but Rodimus Prime would, would probably see eye to eye with the MP10 Optimus Prime. And uh, as I'll show you guys in a minute, this, this figure does not do that in the least. But anyway, his other accessories, he does come with his Target Master, uh, as you know, uh, from Season 4 of the Transformers, or f uh, um, uh, the Target Master uh, uh, came into prevalence in that, and Hot Rod was a Target Master Transformer. Uh, he also comes with his circular uh, handsaw, which can be uh, placed, uh, interjected onto one of his arms uh, from Transformers the movie, as well as his twin uh, blasters, which actually I don't ever recall ever seeing him actually use in the film or t TV show. Not in that matter. He always used. Uh, he always fired out of his uh, his uh, smokes. Uh, his uh, smokestacks or whatever those are, his exhaust pipes there. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. But anyway, let's get that other face sculpt on, and I'll kind of show you how you can kind of get him to look a little more Rodimus Prime-esque, but nevertheless, he still won't scale up as Rodimus Prime. But, uh, yeah, let's take a look at that right now. All righty, so check it out. After much finagling, and you do actually need to get at a uh, small uh, precision screwdriver, there's a tiny screw on the back side of his head uh, that you need to undo in order to uh, get... Uh, change out the face sculpt you can see the little uh, screw screw hole there um, but anyway I got the more mature stern looking Rodimus Prime-esque face sculpt on his head um, in addition you also kind of move up his shoulders give him kind of more like a shoulder pad kind of more of a linebacker look uh, make him look a little larger than Hot Rod uh, nevertheless his size is still the same um, so yeah, I mean it looks fantastic if you're a Rodimus Prime fan and you're just displaying this on its own um, That would totally work uh, just fine But uh, I don't know if you can display this with other necessarily masterpiece transformers as Rodimus Prime As you'll see in just a second as we go to compare and contrast And yeah, you see, as you can see, when you put him next to the MP10 Optimus Prime, and this is not a huge figure by any stretch, um, yeah, he's totally dwarfed. And, you know, Rodimus Prime would look Optimus Prime eye to eye. Um, here's a Coke can in there for uh, for, dis for scaling purposes. You can get an idea of what I'm talking about here. But yeah, if you were to put him on a shelf by himself as Rodimus Prime, totally would work. But you put him on a shelf with other Transformers, and that idea falls completely flat. He truly is, in that sense, Hot Rod. Alrighty, so check it out. As you can see, the scaling issue still prevails here and is actually quite accurate, probably, uh, when you compare him next to my uh, original Hasbro um, slash Takara, really more Hasbro, though. This was the U.S. sold uh, Rodimus Prime. This actually doesn't even transform into his, uh, into his uh, truck. It's not an RV, guys. It's a futuristic truck. But, uh, yeah, it, he doesn't even actually transform into that. So in that sense, this figure kind of sucks, even though I don't actually transform my masterpieces. So I guess it's probably not a really big deal. But, um, yeah, as you can see, the, the scaling is pretty accurate. Really, really nice on this uh, when you put it in between these two characters here. Um, I, I really just looking at the face sculpt and looking at what the face sculpt looks like as, you know, with him as in like a pseudo Rodimus Prime makes me really wish that fan toys would do an actual Rodimus Prime figure. Because, well, I love this figure a lot and I've had it for years. It kind of feels dated next to this figure and even next to the MP10 as well. Um, you know, this one just feels kind of spindly and it's never quite posed quite right. It's always been a little off. And the fact that it doesn't even transform into his full truck mode, again, not that that should really concern me that much because I don't transform the damn things, but eh, it just does take a little bit of validity away from it, I think. But yeah, nevertheless, you guys can really get a feel for that scaling right here. Alrighty, and finally here he is next to his contemporary. This is a this is a knockoff, a uh, Takara um, a Hot Rod. I can't remember what the masterpiece number it is, but uh, maybe my 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 good buddy Roy uh, from Holland can hook me up with that. I don't remember his specific number, uh, but uh, Roy is a Transformer expert, 
and uh, his uh, I think his uh, handle Soundwave uh, 70. Oh, it's not not crossing my mind, but he'll leave a comment. I'm sure in the comment section. Do check out his channel because he's got some awesome Transformer room tours on his channel. You should totally check it out. Um, they're a little older. Those, those room tours are a little older, but man, they look really really cool. His uh, his vids are really cool. Um, his Transformer collection is really impressive. So he would know exactly what the, the MP designation on this figure is. But look at it next to the fan toys, and it looks like a total piece of shit. And I and I regret almost buying it. Um, I'll probably put this one in car mode and have it displayed that way because I really love the fan toys. Um, it's just amazing how much of a step above this figure is compared to this figure, um, especially when you check it. First off, the head looks undersized on this one now, and look at that backpack there. Look at that. Look at that. Guy looks like guy looks like uh, Hot Rod looks like my, myself in my freshman year in college when I thought I had to take all my books to class and I had this backpack loaded down with like a giant big ass biology book and my giant Psych 101 book and my giant American Lit book and I'm walking around campus like a doofus. That's what this Hot Rod looks like. Looks like Nick Knack is freshman year in college like an idiot. But yeah, this yeah compare it to this one which is much cleaner. I mean yes, there's still a little bit of a backpack there, but look how much cleaner that is. Ugh. Just, there's no contest. Alrighty, guys. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that that uh, that awesome but brief showcase of my awesome fan toys, Hot Rod, aka Hoodlum figure that I just got. Absolutely fantastic uh, figure. Really, really excited to add him to my collection. I may be adding more fan toys, Transformers in the months to come. They are a little pricey, and you know when you already collect Hot Toys figures and you already you know got a thing for arcade one up machines, you, know, you got to kind of limit and, and budget and and you can't get everything, you know. Uh, but, yeah, I do really enjoy this particular figure, and I would like to add more in the near future. Uh, so, also, I got this little tiny package right here. I haven't unboxed this yet, so I'm going to open this for you guys right now. Um, I know what's in it, and it's kind of a, a harbinger, I hope, of some things to come down here in the archive room. I do have one more little project. You guys love my Switch Buds. Uh, I do have one more little project down here uh, that I do want to do in the coming months. And uh, this is sort of a harbinger of that, even though I don't know if I can really use this particular piece for that. Um, we'll see. Um, I don't know if it actually runs. But I haven't actually opened this yet. I do need to leave this uh, this eBay seller some uh, some feedback. So it's about time I got this out. So uh, really nicely packed. Look at that. That's nice. Looks like it could be a looks like it could be a big roll of Mary Jane, doesn't it? <laughs> it's not. Okay, seriously though, let's get this thing really open packed it well. and uh, check it out. Alrighty, wow. Da, 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 da. It's a little HO scale train engine, just like the one I had when I was a little, little boy. I'm going to show you guys a close up of this right now. Alrighty, so look at this beast. This is a little tiny HO scale uh, die cast metal engine. I actually don't even know how old this is. I had one exactly, almost exactly like this when I was six years old i got it for christmas uh that i got a train set for christmas that year it was one of those really really special christmases um it was one of those situations where we were going out of town to see uh some relatives on christmas day and so my parents did christmas eve like two nights before christmas and so they took us out to a nice dinner and then my dad had one of his uh his uh, co-workers come over to the house and put our Christmas presents under the tree. At least, well, I, at least I think it was uh, one of my dad's coworkers. It might have been Santa Claus, but uh, no. So they, they 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 had all the presents put out while we were at dinner. We came home and it was like magic freaking Christmas. You know, oh Santa came early. Look at all this cool cool stuff. Well, yeah. So this I got th this train set that year with this almost exact same engine for it, and it was this engine was actually or that engine I should say that I got with that train set was my dad's when he was a little guy, and so I inherited that train engine from him, and I don't know what happened to it. I always wondered what the hell happened to it. It actually had a little Tyco uh, uh, wording on the side here, which this one does not, and for the headlights, it had like a little sparkles in the front and in the back. Um, looks like it's missing a coupler back here. That's unfortunate, but the plan is, the plan is, in the coming months, and I don't know how soon I'm going to get to this, I want to do a ceiling train down here in the archive room a, uh, i want to drop down some 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 wood and put together an electric train set on my ceiling down here 
Uh, I just think it'd be fantastic. And hopefully this will be part of it. I don't know if this thing actually runs. And if I put this thing on a modern, um, the weight of it and everything and, and how much juice it takes, I don't know. But if I put this on a modern train track, it might like suck up all the juice and short the whole system out. I don't know. Um, again, I don't even know if this runs. It was one of those things. It was 10 bucks on eBay. I put in a bid for 10 or nine 99 with a ten dollar ship and i and i figured you know i'd get out bid and i was the only bid and then the auction ended and i won so i got it for twenty dollars twenty freaking dollars for this like i said it's die cast metal it's weighty it's heavy and it's absolutely gorgeous and just takes me right back just want to get some oil for it oil up oil up those uh oil up those wheels a little bit and uh and see if this thing runs in the near future it's going to be very exciting so anyway yeah so look for a, a hopefully in the near future i will be showing off how i did if I can do it, a uh, really cool, uh, hopefully, ceiling train set. It's going to be awesome. Dad, you're old. Really old? Like, I mean, really old. Alrighty, guys. Well, thank you so much for hanging out till the end of the video so I can re reveal what is inside this mystery box. And yes, I've actually already opened it and taken it out because I, I needed to get that seller some feedback on eBay. Uh, so, yeah, I've actually already opened it to make sure everything was in it, too. I had it sitting in my uh, living room for about a week. And, yes, I am crouching down. Uh, I, I have some uh, some tripod logistics that I'm working through here on the channel. I actually have a new tripod coming in the mail. I'll probably get here tomorrow. So, uh, yeah, my old tripod just isn't cutting it anymore. So, yes, I'm squatting down. I'm not quite this short. Uh, but, yes, I'm squatting down so you guys can see. Uh, so, anyway, so let's get this. So I'm going to show you guys what was in this box right freaking now. It's going to be awesome. Alrighty, guys. Well, do 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 do. Yeah, that's right, guys. Come and play, cause everything's fucking a okay. That's right, guys. I know this is probably maybe eye rolling for some people, but yes, I got this awesome Fisher Price Sesame Street playset, little people playset from 1974 off eBay. I got this for less than $90 shipped. Uh, came with a number of the little tiny little people figures in addition to a number of accessories. And it is absolutely awesome. Talk about chicken soup for the soul. That's what this piece represents to me. I actually had a different Sesame Street uh, Little People uh, playset when I was a kid. It was the clubhouse version. I didn't have this piece, but my preschool teacher did. And she would bring it in special for me to play with uh, every like Thursdays, if I remember. It was something like that. Once a week, uh, she would bring it in special for me. And I coveted and I coveted and I coveted. And I just loved the this thing to freaking pieces. And I never owned it. Well, now I do. Absolutely freaking awesome. And this is what I mean when I say that your childhood is my hood. Because this channel is all about what is awesome about collecting. And our emotional attachments to things that make us want to collect. And for me, this was definitely, uh, uh, you know, just a, just a glaring beacon of that sentiment. Of just complete and utter joyful utter nostalgia. I mean, just seeing this right here just reminds me of that day when I, when my mom made me macaroni and cheese with a little extra milk in there and let me eat a bag of Cheetos to go along with it. And it just was just euphoria. Yeah. That's just, this, this just kind of takes me back to that. It is just comfort food for the soul. Let's get this thing open. And I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a tour of the Sesame street apartment playhouse from Fisher price from 1974. Alrighty, guys, let's start out with the front side of this awesome piece. And I do think one reason why I loved this so much as a child was it really does kind of like feel like the set of Sesame Street. It really, the way it kind of winds around there, um, really, really do feel like this is like really, really represent representative of what the set looks like even today, but especially back then. Of course, you got Oscar the Grouch. I need to get like some kind of crate for him to be on. Back here was Big Bird's Nest with a bunch of barrels and shit. Look at this, this uh, little cool little truck here. It's got the, from the sanitation department hanging out there. Looks kind of reminds me of, uh, kind of reminds me of my, my uh, sister station, uh, the Red Cup Review. There's Rob Banks there working for the sanitation department. Absolutely love that. Um, yeah, I love you, Rob. You know, you know it's all love, buddy. Uh, but yeah, no, totally cool. Look, there's Bert and Ernie hanging out in their apartment up there. Um, on the second floor there as you wind around. And look, oh, it's Mr. Hooper. Rest in peace, Mr. Hooper. Do you guys remember when Mr. Hooper passed away? Look, if you're a guy in your 40s, or, or a gal for that matter, in your 40s, you know, Mr. Hooper's death, the actor's death on Sesame Street was, was something that was like so profound. It was like my first real like 
passage into understanding, kind of getting the grips on what death was all about was when Mr. Hooper passed away. It was very, very sad, very, very tragic. And the way they handled it on Sesame Street, as I recall, I've actually gone back and watched a part of that episode um, on YouTube or somewhere uh, as an adult. The way they handled that was so beautiful and so touching. Uh, But nevertheless, rest in peace, Mr. Hooper. He was awesome. There's Mr. Hooper's store, of course. And then, of course, um, you got Gordon and Susan's apartment up there. I'm going to be showing you guys all this. Got a little mailbox there a fire hydrant but yeah the way it just like i said the way it kind of wraps around just really really does feel like you're on the set of sesame street at the children's television workshop and uh, absolutely freaking awesome uh, i am a huge proponent of pbs i'm a regular um uh well so, okay not regular but i do give money to pbs every now and then i do believe in public television a great deal and uh so uh, yeah this is this is this is definitely hitting my sweet spots in more ways than one so anyway yeah let's go ahead and take a look at the interior of this really really cool of course the door opens ah oh, see i could totally see why this was just so awesome as a kid just ah oh, there's just so much to love here so much to freaking love all righty and again there's just so much to love as you flip it around it's even just as fun on the other side you got all these little apartments here look at that look at that you got cookie monster hanging out there he's got some cookies in the oven cookie 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 starts with c <coughs> shit Man, it's like that that guttural voice that every single heavy metal band or death metal band has now. It's like it's like Cookie Monster. And that Cookie Monster's a little rough. Of all the figures that I got, his is a little rough. But you gotta give some slack here, guys, because you know what? This, like I said, this piece came out in 1974. They never had collectors on the mind back then when they made this stuff. Uh, this was strictly for children. This was strictly to be played and consumed, and eventually, you know, uh, passed on and let go. Uh, and this piece has actually held up tremendously well, uh, c- all things considering, considering its age, considering, you know, it is, it is over, f- it's almost like 40, what is it, almost like 45 freaking years old now? Good Lord. Um, so anyway, so there's a chalkboard over here, and that's that's held up real nice, um, but that's really cool. And then of co- over here, of course, speaking of which, you got Mr. Hooper's store. Let's get Mr. Hooper behind the counter, his lunch counter there. Mr. Hooper's store, looking really, really cool. Got a little customer there. Uh, I got a little toy shop in there as well. That's absolutely fantastic. Um, yeah, it looks like that's just freaking awesome. And then, of course, up here, you got Bert and Ernie's apartment. That's right, Bert and Ernie's freaking apartment. That is so absolutely awesome you know over the years you know a lot of people have made you know uh, grown-ups i should say have always made assumptions about Bert and ernie's lifestyle because you got two seemingly what would seemingly be grown men living together in a single bedroom apartment and there's always been some you know assumptions that they were maybe perhaps gay and not that there's anything wrong with with being gay not one bit i don't want to ever ever sound like um uh, homophobic on this channel because there's nothing absolutely wrong with being gay but i also have always kind of found that a little insulting that two grown men uh couldn't be heterosexual and living together i mean first of all look they've got two separate beds there and you know what i happen to know two uh heterosexual guys as well that are both just simply a divorce each away from living in a cluttered one bedroom apartment somewhere yeah fucking a right i do yeah so anyway yeah, so there's Bert and Ernie's place, looking really, really freaking cool. Look, Bert's got his pigeon up there, absolutely awesome. There's the bathroom back there, and then of course, of course, we've got a toy box and everything. I mean, yeah, absolutely awesome. They got their collectibles in there, as it would be. Yeah, that's so freaking cool. They got their beds, E for Ernie, B for Bert. Yeah, absolutely cool. Overlooking Sesame Street there. Yeah, and then as we move over here, look at this. We got Gordon. And Susan's apartment, and they're just chilling there. Look at Gordon. What a sport, man. Gordon is a sport. He's just sitting there hanging with Susan. Yeah, you know, he'd rather be down the street at the pub having a cold, frosty one. But, you know, he's buying his time, guys. He's buying his time. He's sitting there hanging out, holding Susan's hand, watching her shitty reality TV shows, eyeing that bedroom, guys. He's eyeing that bedroom because he knows if he humors her long enough in a couple hours... That's right. That's right. It's going to be rinky, rinky, rinky time up here in Sesame Street. That's right. Gordon is biding his time. Look at that smile on his face. He knows. He knows. He's just going to watch this bullshit TV show just a little bit longer. And then they're going in there. They're going in there for some, for some. He's going to be learning his ABCs as in (laughs) S-E-X. Oh, hell yeah. Hell yeah. You get some, Gordon. You get some, bro. 
So there it is, guys. There is Sesame Street. This is absolutely awesome. Like I said, chicken soup for the freaking soul. Love it. Well, alrighty, you guys. That is going to wrap up this edition of the Plastic Planet. I really do hope you've enjoyed it. I believe you probably would agree that this was an extremely eclectic eBay haul that I have here today, including that awesome Fan Toys Hoodlum, a.k.a. Hot Rod, a.k.a. Rodimus Prime figure, as well as that uh, HO scaled uh, die cast metal, I have no idea how old it was, uh, train engine, in addition to this awesome Fisher Price uh, Sesame Street playset from 1974. It's weird to have a collectible here in the Plastic Planet that is actually older than me. And uh, that's exactly what this thing is. It just really takes me back. I didn't show you guys Oscar too well. Look at Oscar. Oh, he looks so good. I absolutely love this. I had this piece uh, when I was a kid because I did have a different Sesame Street uh, uh, playset, as I mentioned earlier in the video. But it was just really cool to see him again. It's like it's it's just like it's just like an old friend coming home. It truly, truly is. And that's what collecting is to me. And I'm sure that's what it is to you guys as well. And uh, that's why that's why we have. Uh, I, I at least I like to think that's why we have a really good time here on the Plastic Planet. All right, you guys, well, that is going to wrap things up. And it's like I always like to say to you guys, life is oh so very, very, very short. So get out there, guys. Get out there and fill it with some plastic crap. Something that makes you smile. Something that just brings something joy to your heart. Because that's what collecting is all about. It's not about the accumulation of more and more and more and more shit. It's about finding that shit that brings those good feelings back to your heart and makes a room just absolutely explode with good, harmonious feelings for you. All right, guys. All right, guys. Don't next time, like I said, that's going to wrap things up. You guys have a great, great week, and I will see you guys right back here on the Plastic Planet really, really soon. All right, guys. Love you. Later. Bye. Dad, you're really old. Like, you're as old as dinosaurs, Dad. <laughs>